Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. It's National Wheaties Week. <laughs> Yes, it's National Wheaties Week, and Wheaties present Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers. On stage tonight, transcribed from Hollywood, another in the Wheaties big parade of exciting half-hour presentations. Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Pearson. Texas, more than 260,000 square miles, and 50 men who make up the oldest and most famous law enforcement body in North America. From the piles of the Texas Rangers come these stories based on facts. Only names, dates, and places are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Case for tonight, Quicksilver. <laughs> At 11.30 on the night of May 22, 1947, the Stockholm Ranch, located in the middle of Carson County, Texas, was darkened for the night, when the occupants were awakened by the barking of a dog. Jim? Jim, wake up. Hmm? Uh, what's the matter, Phil? You hear Jeep bark? Well, kind of. I was half asleep. Funny. He barked and then shut up real fast. He might have took off after no, something. He kept on barking, then. It sounded like uh, he was... Be quiet a second. See? Don't hear him anymore. Yeah. What are you going to do? Well, take a look see. It ain't like Jeep to bark at nothing, then shut up. Jeep, Jeep. Hmm? What's the matter? I... Jeep, somebody came in the house. Oh, you probably just heard the kid tossing in his sleep. No, I... I got a funny feeling. All right, I'll put on a light and have a look. I'm coming along. I want to go and see him again. It's National Wheaties Week. Time to buy Wheaties, eat Wheaties, buy more Wheaties, eat more Wheaties. Time to join America in a brighter morning. Sure, it's National Wheaties Week. Everybody's eating them. You have some, too. Have them for fun. Have them for flavor. Have them for feeling good and working good and looking good. Have Wheaties for any reason at all, but get them. Whole wheat. Crisp whole wheat. Golden whole wheat. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties plate. You try them. See how Wheaties at 7 can help at 11. It's National Wheaties Week. <laughs> On May 29, 1947, the bodies of Jim and Flo Stockholm and their 10-year-old son, Carl, were discovered by a playmate of Carl's. Sheriff Lockins notified the Texas Rangers, and Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned to the case. Raises well, just like it was, Jace. Sipping for the bodies. Kind of a mess, isn't it, Sheriff? Yeah. All three of them in their night clothes, you said. Yeah. This here is Jim and Flo's bedroom. I see. Their clothes must up. Whoever did the killing woke him up. Likely the dog woke him. Oh, yeah. Jeep, you said. Found him dead a piece from the house. Clubbed over the head. Uh-huh. Okay, let's say Flo and Jim Stockholm were awakened by the dog. Jim would get up and see what was the matter. Flo went with him probably to see if the kid Carl was okay. He didn't get no further than the, in this room here, right outside the bedroom. Yeah, all three of them. Funny Jim Stockholm didn't have a gun. Yeah. If he thought somebody was in a house or prowling around outside, he'd have grabbed his gun. I know that something stopped him. What are you thinking about, Jase? 
Just that the killer might have got in Carl's room. That's right over here. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Maybe Carl spotted the killer, hollered, and that'd make both Jim and Flo jump fast. Yeah. Jim wouldn't think of grabbing his gun. This window here has been jimmied up. You see that? Yeah. I guess you're right. Killer coming this way. Kids saw him. Yelled. Tried to get out. Got as far as the room out here. Uh -huh. Here's what they were killed with, Jason. Flat iron. An old-fashioned flat iron. Yeah, used as a doorstop. Killer grabbed it and used it. Wonder why he didn't shoot. How far away is the next ranch, Sheriff? Six miles at least. Why? I'm just figuring maybe the killer didn't want to risk the noise of shots. Must have picked up the flat iron. Why, he killed a little kid, too. And didn't want anybody to be able to identify him. Yeah, likely. Well, what now, Jase? I'd like to fine comb this house for fingerprints. Meantime... I got a few things I'd like you to find out in town. There were no fingerprints anywhere, except those we knew were of the murdered people. The motive for the crime was robbery. Jim Stockholm kept fairly large sums of money on hand to pay cash for whatever he bought. We didn't find a penny in the house. The whole thing looked hopeless. Like the sheriff said when he came back to the Stockholm ranch... Yeah, the coroner can't give us much, Jase. Ain't no way of telling how long they've been dead. If we could find out what day the murders were committed, we'd have something. Not much, but something. Yeah, but how? How are you going to find that out? Nobody saw the Stockholms before they were killed? For sure. Jim went into town on the 22nd week ago. Out here, if nobody sees his neighbor for a week, ain't nothing thought about it. So the murders could have been committed any time between the 22nd and the day the bodies were discovered. That's the way it sizes up, Jase. Killer's got at least a week to make tracks for, well, Texas is big. Uh -huh. And Sheriff, that fence there, mm -hmm. near the corral. Well, that's a hog, and it's, hey, the hogs are gone. Yeah, busted through. Come on. I never noticed it before. I never thought about looking for the hogs. Who would? Well, look here, Sheriff, where the fence is busted through. Look at these. Yeah. Hog bristles. Lots of them. Caught on the broken part of the rail. Hogs broke out and pushed through here. Yeah, but look at here, Jase. What's it got to do with what we're after? What made these hogs go wild and break out? It's my guess they got awful hungry. Sure. They went looking for something to eat. Come on. We're going to the barn and take a look at the hog feed. Then we're going into town. <laughs> We found three sacks of hog feed in the barn. Two of them were full, unopened. The third had just about enough mash taken out for one feeding. Sheriff Larkins and I went into town. Then the sheriff asked a few questions I wanted answered, and I checked at the feed store. Sure, Jim Stockholm bought all his feed in here, Ranger. You remember when he was in last, ma'am? Bet I do. Last time anybody saw him. The 22nd? That's it. What did he buy? Mm, three sacks of hog mash. Well, got all the information you wanted, Jason. Thanks, Sheriff. Now, ma'am, is there anything else you can remember about that day? Stockholm seemed troubled or anything? No, just stopped in for a minute. All he said was he had to get back to the mash. She was all out. Are you sure of that? Just as sure as I'm standing here. And you're sure it was the 22nd? I can make it real sure, Ranger. Got all my sales in this book. Let's see. Yeah, here it is. Twenty seconds. Three sacks of hog mash to Jim Stockholm. Thank you, ma'am. Let's go, Sheriff. You're sure welcome, Ranger. You helped a lot. What have you got, Jason? The Stockholms were killed on the 22nd. How do you know? Jim Stockholm bought these three sacks of feed on the 22nd. He said he was all out at the ranch. He had to get home and feed the hogs. We found two of the bags unopened. Yeah, and a third with only about enough mash out of it to give the hogs one meal. Which means he fed the hogs on the 22nd, but he didn't the next day or the next. Because he was dead. That's it. Now, we've got a lot of checking to do, and it's all going to hinge around the 22nd. <laughs> We 
questioned everybody, but it all added up to a big round zero. Everybody knew Jim Stockholm and liked him. He didn't have an enemy. Everyone we questioned could account for his time on the 22nd. Nobody'd seen a stranger in town. So I played a hunch. Sheriff Larkins and I rode over to the Stockholm Ranch trying to pick up anything. Then about eight miles north of the ranch, we got a break. Hey, Chase! Chase! Yeah, Sheriff? Here, will you? What do you got, Sheriff? I don't know. It looks like ashes. Empty bean can there, too. Mm-hmm. Looks like somebody cooked himself a meal here. Horses tracks around here, too. One horse. Yeah. Looks like they might be about a week old. Might not mean a thing, Chase. Could be anybody's horse. Sure could, but nobody in town saw a stranger. A little town like that, people notice a stranger right away. But if a man came riding from this direction, chances are nobody'd see him. Still could be anybody. I know. And I'm going to take a real close look. Okay, I'll cover this part. Good. Sheriff, come in. Get something? I think so. Look. Try this horse to this mesquite. See? The horse stood here, keeping the mesquite broken off. Now, here's something else. Take a look. Good. Just ordinary earth. Take a good look. Mm, it's different from the earth around here. It sure is. Different color and different texture. Sheriff, I got a hunch this dirt scraped off a boot when he got back in the saddle. Scraped off by a stirrup. Yeah, here's a bigger hunk of it. Yeah, reddish color. You ever see dirt like this around here? No. That hunk's got a funny shape. Back in against the instep of a boot, it would take this shape. You had any rain around here lately? The flies are bald. There's only one way earth packs up in an instep if it's wet. The man who left this couldn't have come far. Come on. Let's see if we can find a couple of his footprints. We picked up a few prints. I took their measurements. And we went back into town. I asked some more questions. Meantime, I sent the earth samples to the lab for analysis. And by the time I got back to my headquarters, Captain Stinson had the report. Looks like this earth came from southwest Wheeler County, Jace. At least the lad thinks so. Wheeler County southwest, well, kind of fits, Captain. Fits what? That part of Wheeler County is not far from Stockholm Ranch. No, it isn't. Just about as far as it would take wet earth to dry out and get hard enough to scrape off a man's boot. Yeah, I see. But what else you got? Uh, a few horse hairs I picked off in the skeet bush. Looks like the fellow was riding a sorrow. Something else. Plaster cast of his boot print. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty big boot. Big man. Maybe six, two, or three. You're right. But there are no fingerprints. There's no real evidence. This fellow whose boot prints you got, he might have been anybody. Might never have gone near the Stockholm rank. Yeah, I know that, Captain. You didn't pick up any of his boot prints around the house, did you? No, the place was pretty messed up. A lot of people got there before I did. Yeah, that's one break a criminal always gets. If only people would stay away. If only they'd have enough sense to realize. Sure, but they don't. They don't mean any harm, though. Okay, what's next? Look for a man six feet two or three riding a sorrel? I'd like to, Captain. Starting where? <laughs> well, Texas, I guess. <laughs> National Wheaties Week. Yup, 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 and in celebration of National Wheaties Week, when everybody eats Wheaties, even trombone players, here's that well-known radio musician, Abe Lincoln. Honest, his name really is Abe Lincoln. And here he is, stepping out from behind the scenes to say, Get your Wheaties. Oh, come on, Abe. You didn't come out from your trombone to say just that. No, but that's the idea. Folks, the Wheaties Big Parade has been bringing you some pretty solid entertainment this summer. I can say it because I've worked along with all the other fellows helping put this entertainment on the air. And now it's National Wheaties Week, and we hope that every one of you who's enjoyed these programs will go out and get your Wheaties. The backstage folks like me, the people whose voices you usually never hear, we'd sure like it if we thought you'd enjoy our programs enough to go out and get some Wheaties. If you like the Texas Rangers, buy a box of Wheaties on Monday, will you? Thanks, and good night, Abe. Remember, it's National Wheaties Week. 
I kicked around for a few days, covering all the ground I could between the Stockholm Ranch and Wheeler County, and then I reported back to Captain Stinson. Kind of picked up something interesting, Captain. Like what, Jace? Weather reports. Here's a map of Wheeler County. The places I've marked in red had rain within the last three weeks. Oh? Well, what about it? Well, this place. Right here. The only spot of the marked places that will show the same kind of earth we had analyzed. I checked. Mm-hmm. So it's narrowed down to that. But you can't arrest a man just because he happened to be in a place where it rained. I know I'm working on a shoestring, but there's no other lead, nothing. Might be I'll hit a stone wall or pick up some folk who just happened to pass through the spot where we found the Prince of Earth, but it's a chance, Cap, the only one. Well, suppose you chase down that lead in Wheeler County and your man's gone. Oh, I don't expect to find him there. He left there and landed at Stockholm Ranch, maybe. And left no fingerprints and not a single piece of evidence. It's still the only lead. You want to stick to Wheeler County, huh? That's about it, Captain. Maybe pick up a description of a possible suspect. Well, where are you start? Well, here's what I think. The man we're looking for is a drifter. Maybe a pope that picks up work here and there where he can get it. The fact that he ate a can of beans and cooked it himself means he didn't have a nickel to buy a decent meal, even though he was near a town. That kind's usually a drifter. He made a buck here and a nickel there. You see what I mean? All right, Jace. Play the hunch. But if the lead peters out... I'm hoping it won't. See you later. Are you keeping touch? Yeah. Radio or phone. So long. <laughs> A little while later, I was in Wheeler County, southwest. I checked one ranch after another, some big, some small. What I wanted to know was, had anyone seen a man about six, two, or three, a man who owned a sorrow and didn't have steady work? <laughs> I once read where a man found a needle in a haystack, did it on a bed. <laughs> well, my needle could be in any haystack. Then on the Claude Edwards Ranch near Ramsville, I ran into something. Sure, I remember a poke buck like that, Ranger. Big fella. Had himself a sorrow. Did he work for you, Mr. Edwards? A couple of days. Drift was in looking for something to do. I don't usually have work for more than my own hand, but this fella came in just about when I needed somebody else, and... What was his name? Um, or- Orwell. Yeah, that was it, Orwell. Now, when was he here? Oh, let me see now. That would be around uh, the 19th, 20th. And when did he leave? You do something, Ranger? I don't know, Mr. Edwards, but I'd sure like to hear everything you know about him. Well, he worked for a couple of days, then come in asking for his pay. That was uh, maybe the 22nd. Are you sure? Pretty darn sure. It's awful important. All right, I'm sure. We had a spell of rain about then. I had him mend the roof. He didn't like it none. Did he say where he was going, anything at all? Didn't say, and I didn't ask. Just handed him his pay. Saw him in town later and dropped it in a card game. Then he let out. All right. Now I want the best description of him you can possibly give me. Everything you can remember. What he looked like, how he talked, acted. I'll try, Ranger. But how are you going about finding him? By now, he might be clear into Mexico. Any place. I'm going to do my best, Mr. Edwards. And I'm not sure that's going to be enough. <laughs> I got a description of Orwell. Six feet two, dark hair, low to sorrow, tight lips, not too easy to get along with, black mustache. <laughs> Funny how little that people notice things unless it's something they really want to see. What description we had was sent out. Fifty false leads came through, a hundred. But every once in a while, one came through that matched something else. Captain Stinson and I talked it over. Well, maybe it is something, Jace. Look. Hmm. A hundred different leads, but there's one that shows up every so often. This one. Same description. Drifter. Gambles a lot. Had a dozen different jobs. There was something else, Chase. Now, look at the pattern here. Yeah, I am. This one keeps moving southwest. Always away. The others jump around. The last report came from San Carlo two days ago. Mm-hmm. I'd like to mosey into San Carlo and see if I can pick up anything from there. I figure this Orwell's moving slow. He's counting on being safe by now. What if you find him? There's still not much evidence. We'd have to get a confession out of him. 
Nothing we've got will stick in a court. I got an idea about that. Let me try it, Captain. In San Paulo, I picked up a few more scraps about Orwell. From what I'd learned, I tried to think like the man I was trailing. Tried to figure out his next move. He gambled a lot, so every town I hit, I asked questions, went to ranches, and asked about poker games and crap games. Orwell was like Quicksilver. Yeah, he was here. Left. Uh Uh-huh. He was there. Left after picking up a few dollars. But the pattern stayed the same. Always moving southwest. Then on the MacMallet branch near the New Mexico border... Orwell? Uh, you say Orwell, Reggie? That's the name. He's riding a sorrel horse. Well, I don't like to say for sure, but I I took on a fellow name of Orwell, and he did come in riding a saw. As <laughs> soon as he hit the bunkhouse, he'd try to shake up the poker game. <laughs> Where is he now? Well, I sent him out this morning to ride fence. Stock was getting through. How long ago did he leave? Oh, three or four hours. Maybe a little more. Tell me something else. Oh, sure. What? Uh, did he have any money when he left this morning? <laughs> well, funny you ask about that, Ringo. Matter of fact, he touched me for a five against any pay he had coming. He, uh, ought to be coming back soon now. Almost time to chow. <laughs> he touched you for five. He won't be back for chow. I'm going after him. I followed the fence rider's trail. It was well in the afternoon when I spotted a rider up ahead. I took off my badge and stuck it in my pocket. Put my guns in my waistband under my jacket. He caught up with him. Oh, oh, oh. Howdy. Who are you? Name's Pearson. You're Orwell, huh? Yeah, why? Boss sent me out to look for you. Boss? Oh, my boy. Yeah, foreman back at Mellet's Ranch. What for? We got to get back to the north fence. You wasn't working there when I left. <laughs> got took on. I guess we'd better get back to the North Fence. Boss says it's important. That's so. Say, come to think of it, you're you're not even on the ranch anymore. I hit the boundary fence a piece back. All right, I got news for you, mister. I ain't riding fence. Now you take off. You see about that North Fence. Huh? You mean you're quitting? Right the first time, mister. Now, so long. Hey. Hey, hold it a minute. You're downright unsociable. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, downright nosy. Me? <laughs> I didn't mean to be. Say, you mind if I ride a piece with you? Yeah, I do. Well, I'm kind of like company. Thought you was just took on at the Mellis place. Seems to me you're riding wrong, mister. Oh, I got no hankering for work either. Not with 500 in my jeans. 500? A poke like you with 500? <laughs> got lucky in a crap game night for last. <sighs> and why'd you take the job? Oh, a man can always use a couple more bucks. Well... I guess I'll be riding on. Hey, hey, wait. Okay. I kind of like company myself. You want to ride a piece with me? It's okay. We rode on the rest of the day, and I found out Orwell was planning to head into Mexico. We bedded down early. And along toward midnight, when Orwell thought I was asleep, he raised up and moved toward me. Hey, Pearson. Pearson. You see them? Something you want, my saddlebag, or what? I thought you were sleeping. No. Don't reach for it, Orwell. I'll blow your head off. What are you getting so head up about? Mm, man starts to go through my saddlebags when I'm sleeping. I get touchy. I'm just looking for cigarettes. No need for that gun. Yeah? Sure. Wasn't looking for 500, were you? You call me a crook? You name it, Orwell. <laughs> you, you are touchy. <laughs> okay, okay. Put that gun away, Pearson. You act like a kid. I tell you, I was just looking for cigarettes. Sure. Yes, I did maybe bust the strap. 
Okay, bring that saddlebag. Cigarettes are in it. Uh, sure. Uh, left or right one? All right. There you go. <laughs> you open it this time. Hey, what's that in there? Mm, stuff. Okay. The cigarettes are wrapped up in that piece of blanket. Help yourself. Well, thanks. Uh, cigarettes in here? Feels like a ton of iron. Could be. Anything wrong, Orville? It's hot. Uh-huh. What do you think of the kind of rock? Why? I knew a man once carried around a cow skull tied to his saddle horn. Why are you carrying this? I don't know. Why are you asking? Who? Who are you? I told you. Name's Pearson. Jace Pearson. Cigarettes are there. Help yourself. Uh, I don't want any. Suit yourself. Mind handing me that flat iron, Orwell? Why? I just want it. Go on. Go on. Hand it to me. No. Hey. Hey, you're looking real pale, Orwell. You're not scared of coyotes, are you? Shut up. Iron makes a good nutcracker. Maybe I carry it for them. Shut up, I said. Go on, Orwell. Hand me the flat iron. Pick it up. It's not that heavy. It's heavy enough. Man could pick it up like this, lift it up over his head, and bring it down. Why not? Why you? Orwell, stand still. Go around. Hold it, Orwell. I'm warning you. Hold it. Unless I have to. Who are you? Pearson. Texas Rangers. Oh, figured I'd get caught up with. Guess we better start going, Orwell. You're not hurt too bad. Shooting by moonlight kind of spoils a man's aim. Come on, let's go. William Orwell confessed to the murders of Jim and Florence Stockholm and their son Carl. On July 15, 1947, Orwell was convicted. His sentence, death in the electric chair. Joel McRae, your Texas Ranger, has asked me to ask you to have some Wheaties. Yes, have some Wheaties, because it's National Wheaties Week, the week when everybody goes out and buys a box and enjoys a dish of America's famous whole wheat flakes. Start early in National Wheaties Week so you'll have time to buy them and eat them and buy some more and eat some more. Wheaties, that is. And while you're enjoying them, partner, you're getting wide-awake energy, whole wheat energy. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Begin a better breakfast with Wheaties. And see if you don't find yourself striding high, wide, and handsome right through the morning. Rangers can ride better, salesmen can sell better, plumbers can plumb better with a better breakfast. Milk and fruit and Wheaties. Get yours. Breakfast of Champions. It's National Wheaties Week. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Joe McRae will soon be seen starring in the MGM production Stars in My Crown. Tonight's cast included Tony Barrett, D.J. Thompson, Byron Kane, Lou Krugman, and Russell Simpson. This story was transcribed and adapted by Russell Hughes, and the program was produced and directed by Stacey Keith. Hal Gibney speaking. And this is the Wheaties man, Frank Martin, inviting you to listen on Tuesday night to the Penny Singleton Show on the Wheaties Big Parade. See you then. Remember, it's National Wheaties Week. Come on, everybody, to the Wheaties party. Eat a lot of Wheaties like the champions do. Dance together cheek to cheek. This is National Wheaties Week. Eat a lot of Wheaties like the champions do. Wheaties, the breakfast of champions. Tomorrow, Sigmund Romberg conducts the Summer Symphony on NBC.